Close your eyes and focus on the breath. Watch the breath coming in, watch the breath going out. And then listen to the drama. As the Buddha said, when you get to listen to the drama on a periodic basis, it's a blessing. There are five rewards to listen to the Dharma. The first of these, you get to hear things you never heard before. Or if they are things you have heard before, you get them clarified. You can settle your doubts. You can straighten out your views. Most importantly, the mind becomes bright. Because you realize you've been learning something that's really important. What you need for your protection. As the Buddha said, if they teach you that there is no such thing as good or evil. Okay, they're leaving you unprotected. And if they teach you that you don't have any choice in what you do, you're, they're leaving you unprotected. Protection comes when you realize that your actions have the power to make the difference between suffering and not suffering, and getting a clear idea of what kind of actions will lead to the end of suffering. The Buddha put these in his noble truths. He called them noble, not because suffering is noble or craving is noble, but because when you think about what he said suffering is. He says suffering is in your clinging, the things you hold on to tight. That means you have to step back from all of your attachments and ask them, is this really worth all that suffering? Is there suffering there? I don't see it. But look, look, because after all the Buddha said it's there. He's pointing you to something you might not ordinarily want to look at. So he's asking you to take a noble attitude towards your suffering. You're not saying that other people are responsible for it. You're the one who's responsible for the fact that you're suffering. Other people may be misbehaving, they may be doing horrible things. But what they're doing doesn't have to make you suffer. It's your own clinging and the craving that make you suffer. It's your craving, the things you want the most, those are the things that make you suffer the most. That goes against the grain. Which is why this is a noble truth. It's teaching you something you wouldn't ordinarily know. The Buddha is also asking you to take responsibility for your sufferings. He says if you develop right view and right resolve all the way through right concentration, that whatever other people may be doing outside, you don't have to suffer. So he's asking you to be responsible. He's asking you to have some dignity in how you look for your happiness. Don't just go for whatever looks appealing. Stop and think. If I act on this particular desire, is it a good desire or a bad one? Because there are good desires. The desire to abandon what's unskillful is a good desire. The abandon to develop what is skillful is a good desire. So the Buddha is asking you to step back from your desires and be objective about them, see where they lead. And then there may be some desires that you really like, that you really hold on to, but he's saying, look, you have to let them go if you want to be able not to suffer. That's what's called taking an, a noble attitude towards your clinging and craving. And that's why these truths are noble. So as you get to listen to the Dharma, you get something noble. And the Buddha lists this as a treasure, one of the treasures of the mind. That once you have it inside, you have this body of knowledge that's going to protect you. Because you listen to the media, you listen to the internet, and there are all kinds of voices telling you to do all kinds of things. You look at our leaders, you wonder where are they leading us? You have to realize they're not leading, they're leading us in the line of greed, aversion, and delusion. That's the way of the world. You have to learn how to lead yourself. And the Buddha is giving you this wealth that you can use to base your own decisions on. In other words, he's giving you protection, he's giving you wealth. So when you have an opportunity to listen to the Dharma, listen well. The Buddha would always preface his remarks by saying, I will teach this topic and I want you to listen well. Listening well means you take it to heart. Not necessarily that you believe everything, but you take it to heart. You contemplate it, see where it makes sense. If it doesn't seem to make sense, you ask questions. And then when you understand the Dharma and you think you've rise to a desire to practice it, because that's when the wealth of listening turns into the wealth of conviction, the wealth of knowledge, the wealth of discernment, all the other good forms of wealth that the mind needs. So listen carefully. Listen to the Dharma carefully, because there's a lot they can do to protect you. Not only from things outside, but more importantly, from your own defilements inside. That's the best kind of protection there is.